Hi there, and welcome back to Morrigan's Cottage, or welcome to if it's your first time. Morrigan's Cottage is a 200-year-old traditional Irish cottage set on four acres of land in the west of Ireland. I'm Ashling. this is my dog Morrigan and my cat Banya, and together we're trying to bring this old house back to its former glory, show it a little bit of love, bring back some of its original features, and just in general make it into a nice and loving home for us. We're also working really hard to get this four acres of land back to a biodiverse heaven and in the future hopefully we'll have some donkeys some more dogs and chickens and hens and pigs you name it we hope to have it but i hope you enjoy morrigan's cottage and that you follow along the journey Here's the little pathway we made the last time. Oh, the flowers. Hello, welcome back to Morgan's Cottage. It is Saturday, we have just arrived from Dublin. It's about noon, uh, we left Dublin about half nine, so we're just getting here now. Traffic was a bit heavier than usual. Uh, but welcome back to Morrigan's Cottage. You can probably hear Morrigan walking around in the background, but I wanted to hop on here really quick before we started the planned work for the day because there's a little bit of an update. So as I said in my video, one, maybe two videos ago, we applied for the vacancy grant last Friday. So I think it was like Friday the 2nd, roughly, maybe it was Friday the 1st, whatever last Friday was, uh, we applied for it. And then we actually heard back already, which is really exciting, although there was some mixed news. Um, so first thing, they got back to us on Thursday. So today, Saturday, it was two days ago. Uh, they got back to us Thursday afternoon and they just said like, thanks for sending in your grant paperwork. Um, we can process this, but we need three more pieces of information from you. So I had submitted everything that's on the checklist. So I'd submitted the application, all the quotes, my LPT, uh, revenue, everything, everything that they listed as what they need on the paperwork I submitted, but they did ask for some extra documentation, which isn't the end of the world, but it is going to slow things down again, which is kind of annoying but at least they got back to us really quick to let us know that this is what they wanted. So the first thing on the list, they want a signed affidavit from me to say that I've never applied for the grant before and I have never received the grant before and this house has never been applied for under this grant and no one has received the grant for this house. So I already contacted my lawyer that I did the sale of the house with and he's got it written up and I'm gonna go see him on June 24th. I'm gonna sign it and then that will be ready and good to go. The second thing that they asked for is uh, proof that my septic tank has been registered to the Protect Irish Waters or something like that. Uh, but basically here, if you have a septic tank, it has to be registered. Um, once it's registered, that generally will mean your septic tank follows like all protocols like that you have to have for a septic tank. And you used to have to re-register every five years or so, but now you just register it and then it's done. So we actually got this as part of the sale. You get like your certificate and the old owners owned it but the certificate was sent to my bank where the mortgage is held and it's impossible to get anything off of them i called before trying to get something else that uh, was sent to them that should be like on my file and i got through to like five different people no one seemed to be able to help me so i went straight to the irish water people and i was like hey um i'm the new owner of this house is there any chance i can get the certificate they sent it back to me i emailed them like 6 p.m thursday and they had it back to me like 9 30 friday morning which was amazing um so that's check we've got that as well so the third thing that they asked for and this is where it's going to slow the process down a little bit which is kind of annoying but anyway sure look it is what it is like we're asking for money we got to pay um we got to play the ball got to play the game their way we got to play ball their way that's what i'm trying to say so anyway 
third thing that they want is planning exemption. Uh, so nothing on the list of works that I want to get done. So like internal plumbing, heating, repainting, all that, la da 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 da. None of that generally requires planning permission. So I don't have to apply for that. But what I do have to apply for is a planning exemption, I think it's called. Um, but basically it's a form you fill out uh, and you submit it to County Council and they're like, hey, um, I write on it like, here's my name, my address, the property, here's all the plans that we want to do. Can you provide a certificate showing um, that none of what I'm planning on doing needs planning permission? So it's planning exempt. Uh, so I have to apply for that. The form itself is quite easy to fill out. Um, you have to submit diagrams of the house with like the layout and like the proposed works and everything like that. And thankfully, 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 uh, Joe, um, who is like this amazing person, he is doing that for me. Uh, thank God, because I wouldn't know how to do it. So he's working away on that. And I am, uh, I have to also order the maps for the house. So like the land maps, because uh, you have to submit, submit those as well in two different sizes. And uh, I think they're like 40 euro and you get both of them. So I have to get that. I have to finish filling out the form, uh, which I kind of started last night, but just didn't get around to finishing it because it's it's not complicated, but it's just it's a bit long. And then we get all that together and I pay the council 80 euro and they will process my application. Now, where the problem comes in, the council who, by the way, I emailed them Thursday night and they got back to me again first thing Friday morning lovely lady she was like oh because I had a question I was like how do I submit this how do I pay for it um and she got back to me and answered all my questions and she was so nice but she did tell me that they are inundated with planning exemption requests and that is more than likely due to the fact that so many people are applying for the vacancy grant and the vacancy grant in my county council want planning exemption now this is not something that's asked for by all county councils because uh, some other people on boards that I'm in, they haven't been asked for it, but um, people that seem to be in my county do have to provide it. So she's like, normally we say four weeks for processing. Uh, she's like, but I can't give you a timeline right now. It is really, really busy. So eh, here we go. Um, so yeah, I have to apply for that. I'm hoping to get it sent in next week once I get all the bits together. And then it could take four weeks. It could take longer to get that back, which is kind of like, oh, now we have another month, month and a half, two months wait just to get that back and then submit it to the vacancy people who will then get back to me about a date that they can come out and check the house. So it's not like ideal, but the only thing that's like good that I take from their letter is that they seem to have been happy with everything that I submitted them. They didn't like ask for um, like... They didn't have questions about anything that I had submitted. They had no feedback on the receipts. They had no feedback on the application form. So I would presume if they are, like if they had any problems with any of those bits that I already submitted, they would have got back to me about those already. So it is a little bit annoying that we have like a month, maybe two months more before we can get the council out to take a look at the house and give us the go ahead. But at least we have an answer and at least we've kind of started the process. So I think the plan is once I get the signed affidavit uh, with my solicitor on the 24th, I'm going to submit that and the uh, septic tank cert to the county council. And I'll also submit to them proof that I have uh, applied for the planning exemption. And I'm going to ask, like, is there any chance because of the backlog and the delays and because like everything in what I'm applying for, like we know that there's no planning required for this. Is there any way we can go ahead and maybe get the site inspection done so that when the planning exemption comes in, we can kind of like push ahead right away. Uh, because at this point, if it does take about, we'll say six weeks to get the planning exemption back, it could take them another two, four, six weeks to come out and do the inspection. Uh, so we could be looking at end of summer before we even get anything kind of going. And I need to get heating into this house like as soon as possible. So anyway, uh, everyone at the county council have been great like everyone I've talked to have been really friendly and you just have to follow their protocol so it's not like the end of the world it's just like I was kind of hoping we would be um, pushing ahead a little bit quicker so it is what it is um, I did ask them again if I was okay to start living in the house because I um, submitted my proof of vacancy so if I can go ahead and move in now, I wouldn't be moving in full time, but if I could stay down at weekends, that would be amazing because then I wouldn't have to be coming up and down. And I'd probably also stay a couple of days that I'm allowed work from home. 
so I'm waiting to hear back on that. That was just on Thursday evening when I asked them that. So hopefully I'll find out next week if I can or not. Uh, the worst they can say is no. Uh, but hopefully they'll say, yeah, like, go ahead. You can kind of start staying there. But obviously you can't start any works. Um, but yeah, so that is what's going on. And I just wanted to keep you guys in the loop because I know you're all invested in this as well. And we're all going through the process to get this old cottage kind of back to its former glory. So I just wanted to keep you in the loop of what's going on. The grant hasn't been forgotten. It hasn't been walked by. We're just, uh, you know, we're going through the paperwork and the bureaucracy and everything like that. So that is what's going on. We've lots of work to do today and we're taking a slightly different direction of what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks, although not too different. So unfortunately you might see sort of some of the same stuff. I hope it's not too boring, but this is what we have to get done kind of. Um, uh, I went to the DIY store and I got some external masonry polyfiller. Uh, which I am, um, if you know me, if you've watched any of the first few videos, I love polyfiller. I think it's such a good temporary fix for things. I do have some exterior polyfiller. Now, listen, I know, I already know that like this isn't the best material to be using. It's not life lasting. It's like the wall really needs like proper fixing, but the wall is actually falling over. Um, and because of that, there's no point us going ahead and spending lots of money to fix a wall that is probably going to be coming down in the next few years anyway. Uh, we're just going to patch it up and we are going to make it look pretty just so we can enjoy seeing it for the next year, maybe two years, and then a new wall will have to go in. Second thing on the list, and this one is more, it has a specific time before we get started on it, but I have someone coming out to look at the bees. Um, I don't think we're going to be doing anything with the bees today, but they're just going to come out, have a look and see what they can do to maybe help move the bees away. What we're going to try first is, um, hopefully, this is the plan anyway, I think, uh, we're going to put a beehive in beside them that has like tempting scents and maybe sugar and stuff in it. I don't really know, uh, but we're going to put that there and hopefully the bees will move into that lovely place and then the beekeeper can take that away and take the bees away. Um, so that is the hope. That's the first ideal. Third on the list, and now don't, don't yell at me, don't hate me, don't be mad at me, because um, I'm going to give you a good reason for it. The spare room that is going to be the office, so not the bedroom, the second bedroom, but the small little office that is currently intact and actually is probably the best room in the house, even though it's like the grottiest. Um, it's the little red room. I'll bring you in in a little while. You'll see it then. That room is really dirty. It's really messy. And I've just been using it as a storage room. I've been putting everything in there, any boxes that we have, um, anything. Oh my God, you're so cute. Stay there for a second. Do you want to come up and talk with me? Okay, you can come up and talk with me. Morgan wanted to join for the video. So that little room, um, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, oh, save some for later. Um, that little room is going to be the office, uh, but it is currently in decent enough condition. Um, oh, do you want to get down again? Okay, Christ. First thing is uh, the room is bright red, so it has to get painted anyway. It's going to be painted that dark green and we're going to have to put base coats on that anyway. So we're going to be putting white on that wall anyway. The white paint that I have, we opened it a couple of weeks ago. It really kind of needs to be used. I don't find paint lasts very well once you've opened it and then you leave it. Maybe other people will disagree, but I just find paint's not great. Like you kind of have to use it. Um, so we're going to use the last of the white paint in there that we have internal and um, get that room painted white. There is kind of a second reason to it and I'll explain it to you. The hope is, is that the council's going to get back to me and let me move in um, as soon as possible. Um, hopefully. They might make me wait till they come and inspect it, but we're looking at moving in in the next eight weeks. Is kind of like in my headset. I would like to move in yesterday, but we're waiting to hear back from the council. If they give the goes up next week, perfect. We're going to like start staying here a lot more right away. If not, it'll be mid to end summer when we're allowed to stay here. So in my head, I want to be ready for that. And I have lots of people that want to come down to the house and stay and help, but I have nowhere for them to stay. I have nowhere for them to sleep. So I have, the house came with like the old bed. So that is still here. And I'm going to also order one of those mattresses that like comes in a box and then like you open it and it like springs out and like grows into a proper mattress. So can you wait for me? So I'm going to buy one of those mattresses, like a double mattress, and have it for myself to sleep in. So what I'm going to do is get that room set up as a guest room for now. So that when people like my sisters have wanted to come down and help, 
like my dad's come down a few times but then they like we obviously we can't stay so we all drive back up to Dublin but once we've given them the go-ahead that we can stay overnight I have people that want to come stay so I want to have somewhere that they can stay to help me while we get this ready so like I said I know it might seem like oh another project we're starting another thing without finishing anything previous that's just how it goes we are chipping away at the house one little bit at the time and you know things come up when they come up so that is the plan for this weekend just a reminder of what it looks like now. Oh, there's a lot more than I thought. does it look perfect but the kind of goal was to hide as much of the holes as we could and it, we got some of it done so once that's dry we'll just paint over it in white I did have to take that big piece off because it was hanging off on this side and also the other side like the top and the outside so anyway we will paint over that and see how it goes But then we have all down here. All down here. All down here. Now this area doesn't have as much showing as the other, so it's not as bad, but still, it's a lot. My ugly wall. Now, there's the little girl in the gate. The laneways, grass is still growing lots. But, here we are, big dirty clouds. Hopefully it doesn't rain, but we're gonna go in, have something to eat, and then let this dry. I don't think I've really shown you because we just got here, but look how green the grass is. It's looking so good. Almost all the little brown spots are gone. Oh, it's so green. And I feel like it's long enough that actually it could do with another mow. But I'm not sure we're going to do that this weekend. But it looks awesome. I'm really, really happy with how that's turned out. Because I was worried I killed it. I was worried I cut the grass badly or something and I killed all the grass. Like there are a couple patches that have brown spots. I can't believe how long it is again already. I'm gonna have to get the mower back out. Disaster. But it looks so healthy. So I'm really happy. Um, 
that everything looks so good. Oh, I forgot to say, we're going to try to do more of the path that we started over that way. Um, but that's a later on thing. We got to get our batteries charged. So I forgot to take a before, before I started trying to empty this room out. Uh, but this is kind of what it looks like at the moment. There's like bags and heaters and ladders and boxes and lots of stuff all over the place. So that's what we're going to be cleaning up. And I kind of started, I was about to have something to eat and I was like, oh no, you know what? I'm going to start cleaning first because I'm not hungry yet. So we're just... Uh, cleaning this place up a little bit at the moment. chipping and stuff like that is that my hand is still a bit sore like it hurts to use my thumb so we're giving ourselves a break this week from the chipping and we might return to it next week but I, I need to get an SDS um, to help chip away because like doing it by hand is really nice it's very rewarding but it is hurting my thumbs, um, all that like holding. I think it's because I hold it like you're holding it. So anyway, extension cord, what are you doing in there? but never used. my friend uh, sourced me through her parents that got us through a couple cold nights so we've got the room nice and clear the last thing I have to take out is that box there but it's got like lots of Kind of ornaments and stuff in it so we're gonna leave that for now i'm gonna have something to eat and then i think we're gonna pop into town because i want to see if the local hardware store has blue wall paint because i haven't gone to pick that up the place that i found paint that i can like they can mix for me it's about an hour away uh, so we're gonna check the local store if they don't have any colors that i like we'll order it online and hopefully pick it up tomorrow on the way to the house um but yeah, we're gonna go into town. I also want to get some mice traps. Uh, last week when we were here, it kind of sounded like I thought maybe I heard something, and the cat was kind of running around to the places that I've seen the mice come out of. So possibly there's a mice or two that are back. I expect to always have mice, but anyway, we'll get some mice traps. Um, I want to cover that hole over there because that's definitely a mouse hole. Um, 
so I mean I'm sure they'll get into this room anyway but then what we'll do is when we get back we'll start getting the vacuum in clean this up and then uh, hopefully into the evening we will get it painted and finish it off tomorrow it's kind of still crappy outside so I don't think we're going to get any painting outside done today but sure look we'll see what we can do but the room looks so much bigger now <laughs> Do you help mommy go and get her stuff? We're just in the car. We just got back from the DIY store and we got paint. We also got my straps. Um, we were at the DIY store and the guy's so helpful. It's like the local DIY store for the town. And he was so helpful and he helped me pick out the right color blue for my wall. So I'm very excited. Uh, it, feels like it might be starting to rain but I think we might try get one quick coat of this paint on the wall so let's give it a go change plan <laughs> uh it's starting to rain so instead we're gonna put the kettle on have a cup of tea and we're gonna get cleaning that little room so when you see me next we're gonna be cleaning okay we're gonna move everything else out of here honey mouse hole over here. I think this is just like plastic board or something, I'm not sure. So kind of have all the dust and the cobwebs taken care of. I think the next thing I'm going to do is because it is, oh hi honey, because it is a little bit um, sort of damp in here, I'm going to get the dehumidifier in and leave that in here for a little bit. Okay. So current humidity is 67, which isn't great. We'd like to get it down to about 40. So we're gonna leave this going. So we got a big red and it's saying, oh, I just went to green. Hmm. I still think it needs a dehumidifying. So we're gonna leave it on. Anyway, I'm gonna go at the back. 